timer and here is your question. Okay, so if you have read and understood, considering a clinical examination station, kindly please begin. I I enter the room. Right. And and then I'm faced with the patients. Um, I want to introduce myself. I am Doctor Wachuku Daniel. I'm one of yes. the surgical candidates. May I confirm your May I confirm your name and age, please? I'm Tom, fifty five years old. Okay, Tom. Um, having uh, read the scenario and having seen the way the patient was uh, have, is having uh, is bleeding, having the, uh, is tachypneic, I will consider this as a Crips. Okay. The patient is uh, acutely ill. Is a is a is a it is potentially unwell. So I will manage him according to the Crips protocol. Since he has already uh, responded by telling me his name, I would. Yes. Uh, assume that the airway is patent since he has talked to me then i would uh, call for help to for the nurses to come then i would uh, then for respiratory movement yes. i would then count the count count the respiratory, i will count the respiratory rates i will also look for, for tell him to open his mouth and check for central sinusis and uh, also see if he's using a uh, accessory modes of respiration I will feel for the chest uh, expansion and then trachea position. Then because uh, the three uh, zones anteriorly for dullness and hyper resonance. Then I will also uh, assess for vocal fremitus. Then I also listen for bilateral air entries, crackles, or for other abnormal, uh, added uh, sound uh, added sounds. Then uh, I would then assess his circulation. I would uh, look for the, uh, assess the jugular venous pressure. Then I will feel his pulse. Then I, when I'm feeling his pulse, I'll take note of the uh, reading, whether there are any abnormalities, whether the, uh, then count the pulse rates. Then I also feel for the extremities, whether they are, they are cold or poorly perfused, whether, there is, whether it is hot or septic. Then I would uh, auscultate the heart, assess, and then I'll assess for uh, if there are any murmurs or any uh, features of uh, cardiac tamponade. Then I will go for the uh, the D component, which is the Glasgow, which I will assess for the Glasgow Como scale. Then I will, I will go to the E component, whereby I will expose his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, I will expose the patient, then I will check the cow for possible deep venous uh, thrombosis. Then I will also uh, tell the nurses, if there's a nurse there, I will tell the nurses to also uh, give me the chart so that I'll go through the chart. Then if I assess, and then if the, I also assess for uh, the pulse oximeter, see if, if there are any uh, reduced, well, see, see the oxygen saturation, and then see if the patient benefit from oxygen. Oxygen. Then I uh, check the charts. When I check the chart, I check for the, uh, the, the, the vital signs which the patients have had. And then I also check for the drugs which the patients have uh, received. Then uh, having done that, I would then tell the uh, patients that uh, um, I would then report my findings to my consultants and then get back to you. Thank you. Then I'll you still have two minutes, 20 seconds, please. What else have you missed? quite a lot so i i give you another chance to consider the things that you have missed and you can add okay uh what i've 
missed is uh, the... Have you examined the neck? Okay, yes, I, I would uh, examine the neck. That's I'll check for what the What would you look uh, for? Jugular venous yeah. The jugular venous position. Yeah. Then I also used to look for use of accessory muscles of respiration. Yes, and you look for the sinus, then, um, signs of sinosis around the mouth. Yes, I also and the, look, yes. Have yes, you mentioned I also those? Like, yes. Yes, and? I have. Yes. yes. Then uh, I would uh, while I'm also checking for the I also assess the extremities whereby I check for the pulses. Very good. Then and? the 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 rates the rate the rhythm. Then I also use the a pulse oximeter and then check the oxygen saturation if Very you good. benefit from and? for uh, then uh, I also. Um, what else would you ask for, or would you go? Would you express your wish to examine? What else? Okay, uh, I will want to examine his, his back. All right. Okay. Why? If possible, uh, maybe I want to listen to uh, or the, the, uh, the long zones, the yes. breath sounds at the back, if possible. Yes. Yes. And what else? You will ask to. If possible, because also patient want to is post-operative, you the, the, the look for the Sorry. Yes, I look for the scar as well. Then I also look for the drop chart and then the fluid chart to yes. show that to, to know that well. the, the patient is also not overloaded. Yes. Right. That yeah. also you have to rule out. So now twenty seconds are left. Twenty eight seven. Okay. Now you can present your examination. I Please. examined. Uh, I examined Tom, a yes. fifty-five year old, a fifty-five year old patient, yes. who presented with uh, chest pain and shortness of breath eight days after, after a hip uh, replacement surgery. Yes. Yes. Um, is uh, hemodynamically stable. Okay. And uh, I noticed that he had a swollen left calf. Okay. The examination. Uh, revealed he had a clear chest with good bilateral entry and the normal percussion nodes. Okay. Uh, my diagnosis is a uh, pulmonary embolism. Uh, my cardiac infarction is also possible, but unlikely due to the nature of pain which the patient okay. had. Okay. What other differential diagnosis would you consider? I would have thought about a pneumonia, but he okay. had good normal percussion nodes. Okay. And then a pneumothorax, a pneumothorax. What investigations would you carry out to confirm your diagnosis? To confirm my diagnosis, I haven't uh, assessed that the renal function was within normal limbs. I'll do a CT pulmonary angiogram to exclude a pulmonary embolism. Then I also do a chest X-ray, D dimer. Then I'll do yeah. the arterial, arterial blood gases. Then I also okay. want to. Do the, uh, Did you mention ECG? Yes, I want to do an ECG. Yes, simple. Yes, and what are the treatment alternatives that you can offer to the patient? Yeah, management of uh, this patient uh, would follow the ABCD sequence of uh, securing yes, the airway yes. before, before moving to the breathing. And yes. then I will ensure that the oxygen saturation is uh, within normal and the circulation is also uh, with adequate. Okay. Then the management can be split into massive pulmonary embolism and non-massive pulmonary embolism. For the massive pulmonary embolism, it is characterized. How would by you differentiate? Uh, now, what it, is the yes, please? How would you confirm that it is a massive or non-massive? The underlying uh, difference between the two is there is a there can be hemodynamic compromise in a a massive pulmonary embolism, okay. uh, which uh, which the patient may not be stable. I may require uh, thromb thrombolysis. If I have this kind of case, I'll put a crash call okay. and get an, a, an urgent help. However, if the patient is stable, uh, I will treat him initially with a therapeutic dose of uh, subcute heparin, then, okay. wafer, uh, then warfarin if warranted. Okay. Right. So that, that, that's our management. Yes, yes. Thank yes. You. Bell has also gone. Right. Uh, you entered the room. Uh, since it's supposed to post COVID era, so everyone says if there is spread there, so you'll probably wash your hands, you'll present yourself, you'll uh, you'll make sure the examiner notices your candidate number, and then you greet the patient, right? 
And then after greeting the patient, I would make sure that you take the consent from the patient that uh, you'll try at least, that you'll try to take the consent from the patient that if um, whoever you are and you want, but it's your intention. And then you'll realize um, also like you have to take the consent. And then for my sake, because uh, I cannot see, I want to make sure that if you are in examination situation, how would you begin your examination? So for my sake, you can tell me how much exposure you will do of the patient after taking the consent of course, and then you'll begin. Because once you talk to the patient, patient answers you, name and age. So you realize patient is talking. How, what else would you notice? How would you uh, confirm or how would you get to know? Because you, and you ask the patient and patient answers you. So what else would you notice uh, that, that will give you an indication that it's a crisp protocol? It's a crisp case and you have to follow that protocol. Uh, if if uh, possible, that the patient is uh, is on uh, uh, oxygen is mask. On oxygen mask. Yes. And then yes. Yes. The oxygen mask. It is as is an acute case. Yes. So then I will carry on with the examination. Yes, and then you'll tell uh, the examiner right away that since uh, patient has an oxygen mask, and most likely. I answered you, but most likely in examination situation, when you'll ask the patient, can I confirm your name and address, name and age? Patient may not answer you. Patient may just keep on staring at you. So you can say, okay, since patient has a oxygen mask on his face and patient is not answering um, adequately to my question. So I'll consider this as a crisp protocol. And then you'll begin with that examination in that protocol. Right. Any Anyone else want to jump in and give the feedback? Has he covered everything? Yeah, ma'am, I have a question, yes. ma'am. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, Would you ma want me to? Please, uh, my, yes. my, question, 